astrology, the very scientific way, life and thinking. It maintains, it explains that all future will emerge out of the past. Your today has emerged out of your yesterday and your tomorrow will emerge out of today, this very moment. Astrology maintains that whatever happens tomorrow is in subtle way present even today. And this we are not able to envision or see. Try to understand something about it. Astrology explains that whatever will happen tomorrow is in subtle way present even today. Three days before the assass assassination of Abraham Lincoln, he had a dream that he had been murdered and that his corpse was lying in a special room in the White House. He even noted the number of the room. At that point, his sleep was broken, and when he woke up, he laughed. He told his wife, I dreamt that I was murdered and that my body was lying in the room, and he gave the room number and also the wing of the White House where the body was lying. He was sleeping in that wing of the White House. And he further mentioned to her that you stood by my head and these people were standing all around. It came like a joke. A laughing matter to him. Lincoln is, and his wife, after laughing, went back to sleep. Three days after, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And three days later, his body was lying in that same very room, in that very place, and people were standing around his body in that sequence that he had dreamt. If what was to occur three days later had not in some way already occurred, then how could such a dream have taken place? How could the dream resemble what actually took place and in such minute details? Such a glimpse is only given in a dream if in some way it is already existing in the present moment. This similar thing happens about the disease. Sometimes you start getting indications just as premonitions. When in 2007 I got a feeling that I am losing the strength in my feet. It is getting weaker. Normally, I would wear a slipper and drive. In order to have a hold, I said, today let me wear shoes and then go. I drove Rish to the capital city and after finishing the transaction, whatsoever I was to do, I was returning. And I realized that my foot is not able to press the brakes. There is a little slipping out. So I was coming out of a small lane to enter into the major road. The car lost the control, the brake could not be pressed. And I had the feeling a few days before. Sometimes premonitions like these come but we go on overlooking. And then it happened that they, they, I drove in the slowest lane, slowly and slowly. 
so slow that I do not even have to use the brakes until I reach home. If we open the window of the present, we will be able to see that future is just outside the window. It is the hypothesis of astrology that future is simply our ignorance. Hence we call it future. If we were able to see it, then future would not happen for us. We would know it is already present here and now. Similar thing happens about the disease. It is like an architect is going to build a structure. Before that, a thought comes to the mind of the financier. He decides to build a building. Nobody knows, only the thought is in his mind. He communicates it with the relevant persons, then goes to the architect and gives him the idea to, press, to prepare a blueprint. Process begins. Nobody as yet knows. Something like that happens. There is an incident in the life of Mahabir over which there has been much dispute. Because of this dispute, a group of his disciples broke away from him in his very presence. Because of this dispute, 500 of Mahavir's monk created a separate order. Mahavir used to say that whatever is happening has in some sense already happened. If you are walking, then in a sense you have already arrived at the destination. If you are growing old, then in a sense you have already grown old. He further used to say whatever is happening, whatever is in the process, has already happened. One long time disciple of Mahabhi lived far away from him during the monsoon season, the rainy season. He was sick. So he asked a new disciple who was present to spread out a mat for him. So the new disciple began to spread the mat and he was just unfolding the rolled up mat. When the older disciple remembered Mahabir saying, he said, stop. Mahabir says, what is happening has already happened. The mat was in the process of being rolled out but it has not yet been completely opened. It had suddenly occurred to him that Mahabir said a very wrong thing. Mat was half opened. But in what sense was it already completely opened? He left the mat there. He waited for monsoon season to be over and went to Mahabir and said, You are mistaken when you said that what is happening has already happened because right now the mat is lying half open. It was being opened, but it has not been opened. So I have come to prove that you were wrong. Your saying is wrong. Mahavir told him that he had not understood what he had said. This disciple must have been of a childish mind. He would not have spoken that way, Mahavir said. You have stopped the process. It was happening, but you interrupted it. The mat which you prevented from unfolding was already actualizing itself in the very process of unfolding. He had in fact already, in, it has already 
being actualized. You only saw the mat in the process of unfolding. But one more process was going on and that is what has already happened. Now, for how long will the mat remain folded? It has entered the process of opening. It will open and you go back. When the disciple returned, he saw that the man had opened the mat and was lying on it, resting. This man had upset everything. He had destroyed the disciple's whole theory. When Mahavir was saying that whatever is happening has already happened, he was saying whatever is happening in the present, whatever maybe is the future, the bud which is coming into blossom, somewhere has already blossomed. So it will blossom, it will become a flower. Right now the bud is in the process of opening, flowering. Right now as such it is a bud. But if it is in the process of flowering, then it will flower. It's having flowered has also in a sense already happened somewhere. Now we should look at this from another angle. As such it seems very difficult. We always look from the viewpoint of the past. The bud is blossoming. But our thinking is always past oriented. It is straddled to the past. We say that bud is blossoming, that is becoming a flower, that the bud will become a flower, but the reverse may be the case. For instance, if I push you from behind, I am making you to go forward, but it may also be that someone is pulling you from head, from ahead. The motion can be in both direction. I am pushing you from behind and you are going forward. It may be that someone is pulling you from the front, but no one is pushing from the behind. In this case, you will move forward. Astrology recognizes the incompleteness of the perspective that past gives the impetus and that future happens as a result. If one views a phenomena in its totality, you can see that past is providing the impetus, but the future is also exercising a pull and a or attraction. The two things happen some simultaneously. Something is being pushed from behind and there is a pull. The bud becoming a flower is not all that is happening. The flower is calling out to the bud to become a flower as well. It is exercising a pull. The past is behind, the future is ahead. Now in the present moment, there is a bud. The entire past is pushing the bud forward to become a flower. And, in, and on the other hand, the entire future is calling the bud to become a flower. These two forces take place simultaneously. Under pressure from both direction, past and future, the bud will become a flower. If there were no future, the past by itself would not be able to create the flower because future must provide the space for the bud to become a flower. In the future, a place, some space is necessary. 
only if the future provides the space the bud will be able to open itself if there was no future then no matter how much the past can try no matter how much it pushed you it would all be in vain no matter how much i push you from behind if there is a wall in front of you i cannot make you move forward the push can be from behind but there has to be a space in front for you to move forward the space is certainly needed to move forward and this space is provided by future if i push you and the space ahead accepts you with an invitation come and be my guest only then my pushing you forward will be significant for my pushing i space in future in front future means that something is in front is needed the past does the work future creates the space it is the view of astrology that looking from the standpoint of past alone is insufficient and only partially scientific the future is calling all the time drawing us all the time to come forward and the two forces have to be understood simultaneously we do not know we are not aware this is the weakness of our eyes this is our short sightedness we cannot see very far about tomorrow nothing is revealed to us let us look at the birth chart of krishna murti jidu krishna murti you will be surprised if any basant or lead beater had cared to look at the birth chart of krishna murti they would have seen that it was wrong to work with krishna murti because his birth chart already shows that whichever organization krishna murti was to belong to he would be its destroyer and this happened lee beater and any besant they picked up three people they were working on one was a german jidu krishna murti and his brother nityanand they were trying to groom him groom him to become the world leader somewhere they have heard about buddha's statement of maitri buddha the friend it was an intense training almost like a torture and when the time came for krishna murti to declare himself he went on the podium and said otherwise if lee beater had seen had worked with krishna murti's birth chart he would have clearly known that whichever organization krishna murti was to belong to he would be its destroyer it shows that whichever organization he would he was to belong he would bring about its disintegration whichever organization he was to join it would vanish but anibisant was not ready to accept it no one could think such a thing but this is the way it happened the theosophical movement tried to groom krishna murti as its leader theosophy made such an effort on krishna murti's behalf that the movement died forever anibisant created a low, large organization called the star of the east just for krishna murti then one day after having inspired the organization krishna murti separated himself from it 
Anibison has dedicated her entire life to putting the organization on its feet and had destroyed herself over it. But Krishnamurti cannot be blamed for it. The star under whose influence he was born clearly announced that he would be a destructive and disruptive force with, within any organization. Certainly future is not utterly uncertain. Our knowledge about it is, un is uncertain. Our ignorance is dominant. Nothing of the future seems to be revealed to us. We are blind. Nothing at all of the future is revealed to us. And because nothing seems to be revealed to us, we say it is uncertain. But something of the future is revealed to us. Astrology is not merely the study of what the stars and planets say or of calculating their significance. This is, one, this is only one dimension of astrology. Then there are other dimensions of knowing the future as well. People have lines on their palms of their hands. People have lines on their forehead, lines on the sole of their feet. But this too is superficial. In every human body, there are certain hidden psychocenters. Every center has its own unique sensation. Every center vibrates in its unique way, at its own frequency all the time. There are ways to check what these are. Human beings have concealed within them the mental impressions or the seeds of the past. There was a particular person called Ron Hubbard. He brought out a new world, a new science to the West. For the East it was ancient. The name of the science is Time Track. Hubbard thinks that in whatever form a man has lived, whether as a man or beast, whether as plant or stone, in whatever form he has lived throughout his infinite span of lives, this entire stream of memories is still contained within him. This, this stream can be exposed and, and a person can be made to re-experience those memories. You know dogs have canny teeth. Whenever dog is angry, he brings out his canny teeth. And you remember that whenever man is angry, he naturally grinds his teeth. The past memories are there. In all Hubbard's research, this is the most valuable discovery. He said about time track that within man there are engrams. On one hand, we possess a memory by which we recall what happened yesterday and what happened the day before. This is our working memory. Just as in a, on, in a computer we have a hard drive and we have a RAM readily available memory. And it is the readily available memory that we use to work on a day-to-day -day basis. So he says that this is our working memory. This is our everyday memory. Just as every shopkeeper or office worker keeps a daily register, this is our working memory. It becomes useless every day and then no longer exists. It is not at all permanent. 
it is the working memory through which we do our everyday work and then every day we throw it out you are going out and doing the shopping you make a list of all the monies that you spent it is a scrap or a piece of paper when you return home you enter that into the major ledger and then discard that piece but deeper than this is the memory which is not merely for getting the work done a memory which is our life which sums up our entire experience this accumulated essence of our experience throughout countless lives on the path hubbard has called this as an engram it has become ingrained within us it lies there in its entirety locked within us just as if a tape is kept locked up into your pocket it can be opened and when it is opened it becomes what mahavir used to call past life remembrance hubbard gave it a name time trap it makes it possible for you to go back in time when it is opened the experience is not that you are remembering it is not as though you are remembering you relive those experiences many times when people present their problems i have mentioned to them go back back track your memory go back into those moments when that particular incident of separation happened because you have not relived those moments correctly start reliving those moments in each moment there would have been in each relation there would have been certain moments of extreme joy or bliss it starts reliving those the intensity the effect of those will start increasing and the bad effects will start decreasing and then ultimately one day you will be freed of that but when it is unlocked when the time track is unlocked you do not feel that i am remembering no you believe it try to understand if your time track is unlocked this reliving will not be difficult in fact without it astrology remains incomplete the deepest realization of astrology is that your past must be unlocked because if you become aware of your entire past then you will be able to unfold the entire future as well your future will emerge out of your past without knowing your past you cannot know your future because your future will be the offspring of the past your future will be born out of the past so first it is necessary that your entire memory track be exposed to view if your memory track is unlocked is like a pandora's box but for this there are techniques and methods you are mistaken if you think you will remember how your father slapped you when you were 6 year old child you will not remember how you were when you were 6 year old you will relive it there is an entire science in meditation we use this Buddha mentioned that unless you are freed of the past the journey in the future will not be possible he introduced the system the technique known as jati samran according to modern psychological ways 
of Abraham Maslow and others. He can take you to the primal scream up to the age of six. Beyond the age of six, it is very difficult to go into. You can reach up to the time when you were conceived, but beyond that it is very difficult. And that meditation cannot be given to the person on its own. Because if all those memories are flooded into your consciousness, you will certainly go mad. But slowly and slowly, these are revealed into as you go into the meditation. You will relive the event. Also at the time you were reliving, if I ask, what is your name? You will reply, Junior. Not the correct name, a six-year-old child is replying. You will be reliving the event at that time. You will not be remembering the name. As a person, you are not remembering when you were six-year-old. Now, in the process of regression, you have become six-year-old. So the answer will be like that of a child who is six year old. Whatever reply he gives will be the reply of a six year old child. If you were brought back to a past and you remembered that you were a loin, then if you were disturbed at this point, you would begin to roar just like a lion. You would not speak like a man. It is possible that you would even attack someone with your fingers and nails. If you remember that you were a stone and someone asked you a question, you would remain completely silent. You would not be able to speak. You would remain like a stone. The analysis of Hubbard helped many people. For instance, if a man cannot speak, Howard would say that this person had been blocked by some childhood memory and cannot move on. He would then take him back along his time track and break open his engram at the time when he was six years old or the point at which his growth became blocked. He would and he could not proceed. As he returns to this point, the influence of his childhood memory will disperse. Then this man will again return to being 30 years old and 24 years difference will vanish. This is surprising. And the surprising thing is that thousands of medicines might not help man to speak, but by going back along the time track and then returning, he becomes able to speak. Many illnesses come to you only because of this time track. Many illness fit into this category, for instance, hay fever or asthma. For the patient to suffer from hay fever, a fixed date exists every year on the same date. At the same time, this fever returns. So there can be no remedy for this hay fever because hay fever is not actually a bodily illness. It is a time track illness Somewhere a memory has been fixed. Somewhere a memory has been blocked. And that has to be released. But it is very difficult when you are working with the people. Tremendous trust is required. For instance, a man has a memory related to the 12th month of the year during the rainy season when 
twelfth comes, when the rainy season comes, the man is getting ready. He is already afraid of what will happen. You will be surprised that the hay fever, which will now attack him, is just something he is relieving. It is not really a fever at all. He is only relieving what has occurred on 12th, the previous year. If you give him a treatment now, you will only be putting him more trouble. Medical treatment is of no use because he is not the same man who existed a year ago and who at that time could have been treated. You are unnecessarily throwing the medicine away because it is not going into the man who exists now and the memory that he is. There is no connection between the two, no relation. Every medicine will fail. Every medicine will only increase his hay fever and so he will say nothing is working. He is again getting ready to repeat what happened the previous year. 70% of our illness happen because of this time trap. They have been caught and grabbed so tightly that we relieve them again and again. 